If you have been reading about all the incredible spy novelty details that are coming out about the U.S. raid on the compound in Pakistan where Osama bin Laden was living, uh, then you know that the operation was carried out by 79 American commandos in four helicopters. By which I mean two helicopters, two backups, 79 commandos, and a dog. By which I mean 24 Navy SEALs in two helicopters. Make that two Black Hawks, ultimately followed by a third helicopter, a Chinook, that was sent to the scene for emergency support. And while we're on the subject of emergency support, what exactly was the emergency? Good question. It must have been that one of those helicopters came crashing down and rolled onto its side for reasons the government has yet to explain. By which, of course, I mean that one of those four or two helicopters had a mechanical failure and tumbled into a courtyard, its tail clipping a 12-foot wall. Which is to say that one of those four, or was it two, helicopters actually just stalled and would not take off. Once the raid was underway, one man, one man held an un- unidentified woman living there as a shield while firing at the Americans. Both were killed, by which I mean an armed Osama bin Laden took cover behind a woman who was his wife, which is to say Osama bin Laden was not armed at all and his wife was not killed. Rather, a different woman in a different part of the compound was killed in crossfire. This is what an evolving story looks like. The basic facts you're getting about the raid on the compound where Osama bin Laden was living and where he died... Those basic facts have been wholly dependent over the last few days on where and when you are getting your information. And spoiler alert, it does not look any prettier when you dress it up and put it on the television machine. Evolving news stories evolve. And they do it in a super messy looking way sometimes. At 1.30 Monday morning Pakistani time, two Black Hawk helicopters. From two helicopters, two Black Hawks brought these, this team in. The end began with four U.S. military helicopters. You see the two helicopters coming in. Four helicopters, two Black Hawks and two Chinooks. Half past midnight, three U.S. helicopters flying low under Pakistani radar zeroed in on the compound. The compound where bin Laden was found, surrounded by seven-foot walls. Walls as high as 18 feet, topped with barbed wire. Walls at least 12 feet high, topped with razor wire. It had 12 to 18-foot walls lined with barbed wire right up to one of those 18 foot walls which surrounded the compound carried about 25 seals to the compound with a second team as backup two dozen commandos arriving overhead approximately 24 navy seals repelled into bin laden's heavily guarded compound incredible new details about how 40 members of navy seal team six took bin laden's compound as dozens of u.s commandos set up a perimeter two teams of assault forces Delta Force and Navy SEALs stormed the compound. Osama bin Laden had a code name, Geronimo. NBC News has learned exclusively the code words used during the operation. A U.S. official says bin Laden was called jackpot, okay, and the term to indicate a successful kill or capture for bin Laden was Geronimo. We've ID'd Geronimo. Geronimo was the code name for the mission to to get uh, Osama bin Laden. This is a story with a moral, so to speak, or an object lesson, maybe is a better way to put it. Uh, And that object lesson is this. The exact details of an evolving story are not the place to stake out your big sweeping ideological argument. There's nothing wrong with having understood those facts differently at different times or having gotten different facts from different sources that you thought were credible and reporting them that way. There's nothing wrong in that reporting. But if you are thinking about trying to use one of the many emerging details, fluid details from the Osama bin Laden story to advance whatever your particular prepackaged political point might be about torture or interrogation or intelligence gathering or the presidency of George W. Bush or the presidency of Barack Obama or global warming or light rail or whatever, caution! Think twice. Think three times, because whether it is the fog of war or sloppiness or we're just going to have to be patient about this, it is clear that we do not yet have the definitive account of what happened in Pakistan, of the events that led to Osama bin Laden's death. And if you try to use what you think is a really great detail from the reporting on that operation to advance a political point, it could turn out tomorrow that that detail is not true. Or someone just as authoritative as the person who reported it today will be out with new reporting in the opposite direction tomorrow. And you, you with your political posturing tied to that now expired detailed reporting, you will look foolish if you have a conscience about looking foolish about these sorts of things. There are a lot of questions that we just do not have the answers to yet. And one of them is where the information came from that led to the courier 
that led U.S. intelligence sources to that compound in Pakistan where they killed Osama bin Laden. The New York Times reports today that al-Qaeda leaders in U.S. custody, Khalid Sheikh Mohammed, the 9-11 mastermind, and al-Qaeda's operational chief, Abu Faraj al-Libi, claimed they'd never heard of the courier. The Associated Press reporting that Khalid Sheikh Mohammed confirmed knowing the courier, but denied he had anything to do with al-Qaeda. The Washington Post reporting that al-Libi and other detainees pointed CIA interrogators to a courier. Clearly, we do not have the definitive account of where the information came from that led to Osama bin Laden. But we will get to the bottom of what we do know next with a very important source, with Malcolm Nance, the former master instructor and chief of training at the Navy's Survival, Evasion, Resistance and Escape School, the SEER School. He testified in front of Congress about how U.S. interrogators ended up doing stuff like waterboarding and why. Please stay tuned for that.